tonight on LTV, where learning never ends. This is LPB, supported by viewers like you. From the nation's capital, the McLaughlin Group, an unrehearsed program presenting inside opinions and forecasts on major issues of the day. to support the McLaughlin Group. GE. From residential to commercial lighting, we bring good things to life. Here's the moderator, John McLaughlin. Issue one, the bomb squad. The FBI this week foiled a horrendous terrorist plot. Eight Muslim fundamentalists, including five Sudanese and one Jordanian, Aliens apparently living legally in the U.S. were arrested on Thursday by the FBI. In one day, the terrorists planned to bomb the United Nations, the Lincoln Tunnel, the Holland Tunnel, and the New York headquarters of the FBI. The terrorists also spoke of assassinating New York Senator Alphonse D'Amato, U.N. Secretary General Boutrous Ghali, Egyptian President Mubarak, and New York Assemblyman Dove Heikind. These terrorist horrors in the World Trade Center bombing which left five dead and cost $1 billion in damage, committed by aliens living in the U.S. with green cards, which are residence and work permits, have been feeding the perception of the American public. A majority of Americans, 54%, now say for the first time that we allow too many aliens to enter the United States. In fact, the U.S. government is now tightening immigration policy. Item. The Supreme Court ruled that the government may turn back boatloads of Haitian refugees or any other refugees bound for the United States without considering their appeals for political asylum. Item, a cargo ship laden with Chinese human cargo beached itself off the coast of New York City. All 300 Chinese survivors were arrested and declared to be excludable aliens. Item, President Clinton calls for a crackdown on illegal immigration and nominates Doris Meissner a tough new commissioner to head the Immigration and Naturalization Service. Item, Attorney General Janet Reno now says that immigration is a top priority of the DOJ. Question, is it time for the United States to restrict further its immigration policy? Fred Beetlesaurus Bond. Well, we don't need to restrict it further. What needs to be done is just to enforce the laws that are on the book uh, for an obvious reason that the U.S. has now become a target of the uh, it's not the Haitians who are a problem, it's not these Chinese, it's not the Mexicans uh, uh, coming over the border, but it is the is Islamic fundamentalist jihad. And many of the, its members have come here illegally. They, they come in with green cards. You know, you noted about the, uh, about the World Trade Center bombing. Some of those had come and gotten green cards, then stayed illegally. People get refugee status, stay on illegally. Uh, they come in as tourists, they stay on illegally. Uh, and there are hundreds of thousands of those, and then there's some in the uh, in this latest bombing plot five were S sudanese nationals why in the world should the u.s be al allowing anyone from sudan to come in the united states when it, everyone knows that sudan is now the vehicle for iranian terrorism it's we not, shouldn't be letting right, any of them in Iran iranian the iranians have moved their training camps to the sudan eleanor well i think immigration policy needs to be rethought in fact we've always had controls and they've been based partially on race and they've been based on cold war ideology i think they that the laws should be looser for the Haitians and tighter for the terrorists. And there's a huge political component here because immigration is the hot issue of the 90s. Going to be very involved in the California governor's race, which is probably a preview of 96. So look for this administration to get very involved. Jurassic Jack Jamon, welcome hey, back um, from the rainforest, Jack. Thank you. Um, <laughs> you get a lamer and a lamer, don't you? Right, yeah. <laughs> every, they, week. Uh, every week. They, uh, there is no connection whatsoever between this terrorist incident and immigration policy. The fact is, if terrorists want to get into this country, they're not going to go up to come through immigration and when they say, we look at the visa, they say, you're going to be here as a tourist? Oh, no, I'm going to be here to blow up the United Nations. Okay, stamp. I mean, they, uh, anybody who wants to create terrorism in this country can get in. There are, there are a million ways to get in this country illegally, and it is not even difficult well, for people, to, for people then, to do that. So the idea that you're going to stop that kind of incident by having well, tougher immigration policy. They, there are other but reasons they have to function in the United States. And if you don't have 
uh, if you don't have credentials about your identity, you can't get credit, you sometimes can't rent a car, you can't do a variety of things. So they well, need some kind of credential to be uh, here. Look, if you're, if you're a terrorist, presumably you have the money so you can get those things. Well, they, what he says is partially true. In the Sudan, they are generating false identity equipment. Well, Sheikh Rahman, this guy who wants to kill Mubarak, and, right. and is ensconced in New Jersey, in fact, came into this country uh, illegally, uh, but got in through, the, through uh, holes in the immigration enforcement provision. The problem here, Jack is exactly right, the problem here is that, is that the, the fact that these are green car holders is going to be used by the Pat Buchanans and the Ross Perots of this world and the to, conduct contract a, no, to conduct a jihad against Mexican illegal immigrants. I mean, we're going to build oh, ditches, we're going to build fences, yeah. absolutely. That's this, a, is all not feeding, happen. this is all yeah. feeding the nativists, I'm yeah. telling you, who want to restrict immigration into this country. Right, what, do general, say about this? what do you say about this? What do you say yeah. about this? I interviewed uh, uh, Bill Sullivan, who's in charge of the INS Bureau in New York. He tells me that there are 72,000 asylum seekers in the United States who are around the country waiting for uh, hearings and he can he can uh, work on he can work out through the system seven hundred and fifty a year. It would take him eighty years well, to get the asylum seekers clearly, before a hearing, clearly, so they can stay here indefinitely. Uh, did, did you know that that Sweden has eight hundred officers who who process refugee uh, applications? We have one hundred and fifty. You know, clearly the INS needs to be uh, made more efficient. It needs to be upgraded, and that's Dor Doris Well, Mike they get a ass. billion and a half dollars a year well, in they, their budget. They, they're, they're, they're not spending it efficiently. Well, and, and it look, is very de decentralized, and it's not and it's not a well managed agency. You have to make a distinction between the Mexicans and the Chinese and the Haitians, and on the one hand, who are not terrorists who want to come to the United States because it's the land of opportunity and these Muslim fundamentalists who want to come to the United States because they want to blow it up, create chaos in yeah. the U.S., uh, destabilize Egypt, destroy Israel, yeah, and so on. And Jack's wrong. There are things that can be done. You mean new when laws? Somebody, new when, laws? When, no, you don't need new laws. When somebody's green card start going after people, they, they can get hundreds of thousands of these people. It's not that they're hiding. Yeah, it's just that they I never don't pick them up when their tar, green cards or tourist cards I don't expire. think we want to tar, tar, I don't Eleanor. think we want to tar a billion Muslims in this world and say that they're the ones who are creating all the problems. The difficulty here is that people don't walk around saying they're terrorists. And Frequently, people come here with a political agenda. It's very difficult to sort Sorry, that out. Going, but but you're, go, you're going to see, I think Moore is right, that you're going to see the political impact of this in NAFTA, in the California governor's race, and people are going to now want to shut down from all kinds of foreign you want to take see, some leadership to keep that from happening. Do you happening. want to see more laws or a tightening of existing law? I want to see a rational approach to immigration. You that, think that we're letting... We now have one that says you stay out if, you're, if you come from a third world country or you're black. You think our Obviously immigration not. policy is lax? Policy, not, not, not its enforcement. Our policy is lax. I no. think the policy is a Cold War relic and the enforcement is, 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 is lax. It's well, applied it's, in the wrong place. The fact is that this necessarily because of the resources given to it, there's very little enforcement. Yeah. I mean, one of the questions we have to deal with is the difference between between limiting uh, uh, immigration of people who need to, who want to come here purely for economic reasons right. and those who will have a legitimate political concern who are really a pretty small number of, of the immigrants. Yeah, but the problem is, you can't have, I mean, every Muslim in the country cannot drive a cab in Washington, D.C., although it sometimes seems that that's happening. <laughs> they, uh, I mean, you can't do it that way. Especially the Iranians. Go ahead. Fred, green cards do not expire. When you got a green card, you were a permanent resident alien entitled to be here. The, the thing is that it's a question of do you give a green card to absolutely okay, everybody okay. Does anyone, to, uh, or do you grant sure. refugee status? I mean, what happens is somebody says, I'm a political refugee. They say, come on in. Does anyone, and then they never get, and then they're here for good, whether they, and they never get a hearing. Does anyone share my perspicacity that this is payback time for the Persian Gulf War? Now, and Afghanistan. Part, Persian Gulf War, and that the attempt, to, the, attempt the attempt on George Bush's life, uh, the World Trade Center bombing. Yeah. Yesterday's Manhattan wait, scares is payback time. Just a second. Well, the, well, wait, just wait, let me finish my yeah, point. I, I and therefore, point. what we really have here is an energy question. Why don't we make ourselves no, independent no, 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 of Persian Gulf? No, no, the no, reason no. why we went to war was because of oil. No, you know no, that. No, Jack no, knows let that. Let me unravel. Let yeah. me unravel. Therefore, them. isn't it not incumbent upon this nation, instead of being 30% no. and 50% no. by the year 2010, on, on uh, Middle East oil let me, to, to, to change it so that we are now less dependent on me, that let oil. Let me unravel the flaws in your argument. You yourself have 
consistently said that this is an Iranian problem. If you'll remember correctly, <laughs> we went to the Gulf to fight Iraq, not Iran, right? So it can't be payback time yeah. for, for, for the Gulf War. Yeah, but what in fact okay. is happening here is that the Iranians are mounting a, a global uh, campaign on behalf of Islamic fundamentalism, and we're getting the fallout. Yeah. Well, there, that, there, my there thesis is, is fundamentally is, correct, but don't don't trust it. I mean, gotcha. the Iranian thesis. John, there, is, there, is a, there is a cycle of revenge, and in fact, what happened this week is probably payback time for the World Trade Center, and there'll probably be something yeah. else that avenges this arrest. Because there is a religious yes. well, 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 you know, well, well, we got to get out. Payback for the World Trade Center. They did the bombing. We yeah, didn't bomb it. We got to get out. The lesson they the lesson, the, lesson, the lesson that they learned from that was not how quick people were arrested, but how easy it was to get well, that bomb. Minute, in no, there. we got to get there out. Is, well, let, let, no, let me say a word here. The, the, uh, you can't you, you can't just start sitting around and ascribing logical motives by your standards to terrorists. Of course. By definition, these fundamentalists are extreme, and they're nutcakes. And God knows what reason they're going to find to do it. It's right, ideology, it not economics, John. Will the United States go the way of Britain, France, and Germany most recently in enacting new laws to restrict our immigration policy? We're here to talk about policy, not enforcement. I ask you, Freddie. In the long run, yes. What do you think? I think the laws are going to be updated, and they need to be. John. I have no idea, Davidson. What do you think? If you're a Turk born in Germany, you can't be a German. Thank God we're not that way. No, we will not. The answer up. is yes. <laughs> Issue two. Equally divided. The Senate being equally divided, the Vice President votes in the affirmative, and the bill, H.R. 2264, is passed. On Friday, at 3.30 in the morning, the president's budget was on the edge of a cliff. The Senate was equally divided. It took the vice president to break that tie. The first time since 1987, a vice president has cast a decisive vote. Late Thursday, the Senate leadership summoned Mr. Gore. The budget was in trouble. They didn't have the vote. In the end, six Democrats, however, defected. Brian, DeConcini, Johnston, Lautenberg, Nunn, and Shelby. There isn't anything in this bill that would persuade me at this point uh, to uh, vote for it. it. It represents too few uh, cuts and too many taxes. No. Senator Lautenberg is up for re-election next year, in addition to two others, Brian and DeConcini. Republicans were solid. All 43 present voted against the Clinton budget. No exceptions. Uh, we stuck together. Not a single Republican voted for the bill. I think we heard the message loud and clear, cut spending first. They had a very difficult bill to sell, both to the Senate and the public, in my opinion, and under those circumstances, it's almost incredible that they won. Republican all inspector and Democrat Patty Murray were absent because they were recuperating from surgery. On Friday morning, President Clinton offered his analysis of the Senate cliffhanger vote. I think what happened was there was an institutional feeling there yesterday, which crystallized in the late afternoon, that the worst thing they could do is not to go forward. And that the, that, that the worst thing they could do is not to break the gridlock, not to find a way to continue to push for real economic reform. Question, what does it tell you that the Senate was equally divided on this issue more contracting. Well, in the first place, there were votes in reserve. I mean, had it really oh, looked as on. though the they, president was going to oh, we hear that all the well, time. In any event, in any, second, secondly, the president. Maybe you ought to explain the, that, the though. Why, why were they held in reserve? Why didn't the senators vote their mind on the first go around? Well, the, the, some of these guys who who uh, who voted uh, against it were up in '94, and they let them they let them have a buy, Lautenberg and DeConcini and so on. Uh, if they'd had to vote. If the, if, if, the, if the thing was going to lose, they would have, there would have been other senators who, uh, who would have uh, joined the majority. Which in one? Any, I, I don't know. In any event, uh, I, never mind. I can't, I can't remember. <laughs> in, a, in any event, in any event, yeah. in any event the, second, the second point is Clinton had to win this, you know. And it was, this was a test of whether the Democrats can govern the country or not. And the Democrats were not going to let him go sliding down the tube now. And the same thing, I think, will happen when it comes you to You mean Congress. this was a question of SIPs? Sudden infant president's, uh, uh, presidency syndrome? You got it, John. Let me straighten out uh, uh, Mort's numbers. It's true they could have had a few more but uh, uh, Democrats, but if the real sentiment of members of, of the Senate uh, were tested, about 30 or 25 would have voted for it. 
They hate this bill. The public has, has uh, in every poll, dislikes it, says they don't think this economic plan is going to work. They have no confidence in it. And they don't have it, and particularly... I don't know what every right. poll you're every talking poll. about. CBS, every poll Come shows on. it. The public, the public has given up on this. They know what's the in it. They don't want this. president and the Congress to perform, and the bill is That's now what, being called appropriately a deficit reduction package. It's not that. Instead of well, a tax plan, which you've tried to make it seem like. It is. It is the first serious assault on the deficit, and the yeah. public did is largely what, behind it and behind this Eleanor, president's Eleanor, success. did you see how the Congressional Budget Office scored this legislation. Now, you said it was one-to-one -one like Clinton. The Congressional I'm Budget Office, which Clinton said, which Clinton said would, uh, he would go by their figure, said it was 2.5 taxes for one in spending. Listen, Jack, your, Jack, your Jack, guys I want to hear Jack. produced a bill that was a total sham. No, I, don't, so. I don't have any guys up there. You do so, oh, Fred. You just oh. spouted their line. <laughs> that was the Congressional Budget Office. <laughs> <Jack>. <laughs> hey, um, all, all these numbers, I mean, it's, it's dull stuff. So. No, 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 it isn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Come on. The, uh, I think the interesting, this, I mean, the bill's castor oil, no question about it. It wouldn't pass if, if they voted their, their uh, real likings in either house. Everybody knows that. Democrats understand they have some stake in it. What is interesting to me is that you understand why Lautenberg votes against it. He comes from New Jersey. He's running in a state where they're obsessed by taxes right now. The interesting thing to me was the vote against it by Sam Nunn. Nunn has a freebie. He's an icon at home. Nobody's going to bother Nunn. Nunn also is one of the few people in the Senate with Benson going, the few liberals in the Senate, with any kind of a national following. It's very dangerous for Clinton to signal the sentence to the conservatives that this different kind of Democrat may not be very acceptable. I think that's a bad one for him. Yeah, but Sam Nunn cannot afford, in the end, to, to sink uh, the president of the well, United he seems States. To be doing a pretty good job. Well, he, wants to, he wants to cause him trouble, but, yeah. but he can't afford to sink him, well, and he uh, wants to be a Democrat. Uh -huh. uh, what's going to happen in the Senate? You mean in the conference? In the conference, in the, conference, conference rather, the Senate conference, They're going to split House differences conference. all over the place. There are, everybody is saying, both in the House and the Senate, that this is easily splittable. Instead of a $70 billion uh, tax uh, in, uh, increase, uh, energy tax increase, you go to 50. The differences are more symbolic than they are real. The BTU tax would have resulted in higher gas uh, taxes is as well. This, Boy, there's is, not much breathing room. Is the Senate victory, uh, you know, the Senate being equally divided, the deciding vote cast by the Vice President, is that a Pyrrhic victory for Bill Clinton or a real victory, I ask you. It is exactly the same victory that George Bush won with his budget deal in 1990. You mean? A Pyrrhic victory Why? that was ruinous politically and economically. Why? Because it hurt the economy? Because it hurt the economy and hurt him politically. What do you say? A Pyrrhic victory or a real victory? It's a serious victory that will be followed up by health care reform to control costs so on into the next century. You, that, that's the question turns on whether the economy is going to be helped by this program. You think it is, obviously. Well, I think there's ideological differences whether it helps or not. Bill Clinton it, happened to win it, the election. It, he thinks this is going to work. Let's what do see. you think? I think it's a real victory in the sense that Clinton had to win it. You think it's going to help the economy? Yes, I, I think we're going to, I don't know whether it's going to help the economy or not, but we're never If going it to... hurts the economy, it's a pyrrhic no, victory. No, we're, we're not going to know that it hurts the economy. What do you think? It's an absolutely essential victory politically, and whether or not it works in the long run, I'm agnostic. It's a pyrrhic victory, and it will turn out to be a defeat because it's going to hurt the economy. It's going to drive down the GMP growth rate by 1% a month, and it's going to increase unemployment by 1%. Let's freeze over that frame. Issue three, the superconducting, super collider, super controversy. By a vote of 280 to 150, the House of Representatives on Thursday killed the $11 billion superconducting super collider. The giant 54-mile oval collider tunnel is located south of Dallas. The tunnel is supposed to smash atoms by colliding their protons directed by magnets moving in opposite directions at a velocity and near the speed of light. By smashing the protons into smaller bits, scientists hope that this collision process will lead to the discovery of the smallest building blocks of the universe and thus a greater understanding of the universe. The project was originally planned to be completed in 1999 on a budget of $8.2 billion. Now the expectation is that the collider will be completed 10 years from now, 2003, at a cost of $11 billion. Critics of the superconducting super collider call it unneeded, and they call it wasteful spending, and they don't miss their words. Under all the technological jargon and scientific hype, the debate on the super collider comes down to a very simple question. What does it cost, and what are the benefits? This vote, in one word, is about money and a lot of it. Now the super collider's fate is in the hands of the Senate. 
Will it survive? Should it survive? Jack Dumont. Well, it's in the hands of the Senate. They've saved it in the past. I'm not sure they can this time. I, I, I think that the uh, liberals are being very short-sighted on this. The, um, uh, this is not uh, pork. This is money being spent on basic scientific research, the, the dimensions of which nobody in politics is capable of really guessing at. You mean uh, the, 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 uh, the successful research? Right, right. right. Uh, there, there are ways out of this which is further stretching, which reduce the immediate cost, and also enlisting more money from outside. Originally, they intended to get money from more from our allies, for example, and bring them into the project. It is not a project that has important military applications and so forth, so there's no danger in doing that, and I think we ought to do this. But, yeah, but the, that, idea, that, that, the, idea, the idea of throwing it over, because you think you're going to build more, uh, put more cops on the street, or you're going to build, build more um, public housing units, that's, it never works. Also, it happens to be yeah. peanuts. Yeah, it's spread over it's 10 years. Over oh, this peanuts. is an argument. It's peanuts. For, this is an argument. We got a 1.4 trillion dollar a year budget. Yeah. This is less than point one 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 thousandths of that whole budget. No, almost. That's not look, peanuts. Look, look, the Republicans are constantly it's spread over crowing. 10 years. Republicans that. are constantly crowing about how you got to save money. You yeah. got to cut programs. Yeah. And now uh, Dick Cheney, as a matter of fact, the former Secretary of Defense, who you think would be for this kind of big science project, in fact, think, thinks that both the Super Collider and the Space Station ought to be... Well, 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 on political I grounds, I said, no, on merits, no, who knows the value exactly of, of, of this type money. of research in subatomic yeah, gas? It's vote, incredible. The, 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 vote, the vote in the House was choices. huge. Fifty more votes than the last time. Right. It seems to me the Senate's going to have an awfully hard time after cutting Medicare and other pro uh, other programs to stand up for the space and line up between two Republican senators. We I don't think Ram and Hutchison. The, we gotta get out. the question is as follows: They want to question. save money. They want to use that money for social spending. The exit question is as follows: Okay, nothing two wrong parts. with that. One: Will the Senate pass it? Yes or no? And two: How would you vote? I'd vote for it, but I don't think the Senate's going to this time. Hello. I don't think the Senate's going to vote for it either. How would you vote? I would vote against it, too. Wrong priority right now. Jack, would you vote? You'd vote for it. What about the I Senate? Would, yeah, I would join some terrible company and vote for it. <laughs> How, what about the Senate? Don't let that stop. I you. think they're going to save it and stretch it out further. You do? Yes. Oh, Jack, you're dreaming. What do you think? The Senate's going to pass it, and I'd vote against it. The Senate is, going, is not going to pass it. The votes are not there. I would vote for it. Issue four, your sign here. Advertising has been brought to new heights, literally, and it's creating an international flap. A company called Space Marketing wants to launch a billboard into space. Here's how it works. A rocket will be sent into orbit. The rocket will then release a Mylar billboard inflated with compressed gas. The space billboard would measure two-thirds of a mile wide and a quarter of a mile high. Viewed from Earth, it would appear to be half the size of the moon. The price tag for advertising on the Mylar billboard, 20 to $30 million. See it for a 10-day, two-week period, two or three times a day, only during daylight. It'd be quiet, it'd be soft, uh, it'd be less obtrusive than a, than a blimp. The idea, however, is not flying on Capitol Hill. Lawmakers are introducing a bill which would ban the Mylar space billboards from being launched from American soil. It is such a dumb idea. Children would learn a new nursery rhyme. Hey diddle diddle, the cat and the fiddle, the cow jumped over the mylar. They would make a wish upon a falling billboard. Question, is the space billboard a good idea, Fred Bond? I'm all for it. I mean, look, we already have airplanes flying around up there, helicopters, blimps. You ever go to a football game, John, and the planes fly over with those messages right. and they buy nachos? Right. You probably go buy nachos. What about the aerospace well, industry? That's, that's not so a, that doesn't, doesn't mean it's a good idea just demand. because it's there. No, this will create jobs, spur consumer demand, economic growth. Well, first of all, I wonder why John didn't think of it first. And uh, second, where is Star Wars when we need it? The, the skies are one of the few places that are not filled with advertising. We need yeah, regulated if, if, skies if I, now if, if and I'm thought it was really going to be just the size of the moon or half the size of the moon, whatever. Be one that you know what's gonna you're gonna have up there within Bigger. three years. You're gonna have a spry, a spry sign hey. that is gonna blot out the whole sky. Hey, that's the magic of the market. What about the impact on the tribesmen of New Guinea? They're gonna, right. It's going to scare the hell out of them. No, it's going to be a new religion. I see, I see. A pet, what, is, wow. What's the logo? That's the question. What will be the first logo to well, go up there? The group. Yeah, exactly. Aha! Uh -huh. uh -huh. That's well, why we're doing this subject. Don't you think it would create John jobs space, for the aerospace the industry to get those rockets to propel this thing into the... I think uh, somebody's got a sharp idea. I think somebody's got a sharp idea, and he's probably going to get away with it. 
Um, we may get away off. with it once, make but then there'll be such competition <laughs> that uh, you be won't, nobody can own the skies. You know, 15 or $20 million, that'd be easy for Ross Perot, wouldn't it? <laughs> exactly. Uh, exactly. Also, I'm a little surprised at you because this would be a perfect sunscreen to, to stop the rays that are developing become, because of the depletion um, is, of the ozone. This is instead of fixing the ozone layer. <laughs> right. We just <laughs> right. cover it up with Solve a band-aid. Solve that problem, too. Predictions, Fred. AARP, the retired person's lobby, on, uh, is going to lose clout on Capitol Hill because it's angered Republicans, particularly in the Senate, by not backing them in their bid to eliminate the increased taxation on Social Security. Eleanor. Uh, next week will be bad news week at the White House. Uh, Clinton's going to back down on lifting the ban on gays in the military. He's going to offer a compromise on the spotted owl that no one will like, and he's going to fire Bill Sessions from God, the FBI. He's finally coming to his senses. That's good what news. You, that's at least good news. Well, that's good, good news. news. <laughs> Bad news for Bill John, Sessions. Quickly. The, the, in the end, the, the, the space station is also going to be stretched out further before the year's up. You remember the chicken that used to follow yeah. uh, 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 President Bush around? Well, the, the Republicans are going to send a taxosaurus, uh, like Barney the di dinosaur, <laughs> chasing around after Bill Clinton. The U.S. trade embargo against Vietnam will be effectively lifted by the United States by November the 1st. On behalf of the members of the group, we offer our heartfelt sympathy to former President Nixon and his family on the occasion of the death of Pat Nixon, Mr. Nixon's devoted wife of 53 years. Bye-bye. <laughs>